Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today's story begins late last week when I added a new image to my collection. You can see the photograph here. This is a soldier. His name is currently lost in time and it was taken by a photographer in Bath, New York. So I had the image and I began to think to myself, what is it, what attracts image collectors like myself to particular images? Certainly our individual tastes, our own interests, our lived experience, they all inform us. But even then, it's really hard to say, what image am I gonna like? What captures my attention? What do I find intriguing? There's that old adage, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, I think it's pr pretty appropriate to be used in this situation for all of you collectors who are out there who are attracted to something and qu can't quite explain why. It's some combination of elements that all lead up to you looking at an image like this one here and saying, wow, I'm really interested and I want to learn more about this photograph. So in this particular case, I can tell you the thing that attracted me initially, the bit of eye candy and all this was the hat. And I'll get to that in a moment. But what I want to tell you is the hat was an entry point for me. And then as I began to study all the details close up, I started to find some really interesting things about this image that I didn't see in the beginning, or at least my conscious mind didn't grasp. Maybe I saw it subconsciously. I don't know. But I want to share these with you and go through them. There's five things that I saw that um, really grabbed my attention as I began to research and began to think about what I was actually seeing. So let's start with the, the gentleman himself. Look at what he's wearing. It's so minimal. He definitely feels like he's more a civilian than he is a soldier. The only giveaway really at first glance is that hat. So that styling sort of emphasizes for me his status as a volunteer citizen soldier. During that time when military was the kind of thing that you might see in a local militia company, um, we hadn't had any major military threats in years. And so folks were more into the citizen soldier idea. There was no, the army of the United States was quite small. So also important to point out here, I think, is the minimalist approach that you see in the style of this uniform is suggestive to me of Ulysses S. Grant. He famously walked around wearing a private's blouse uh, with his shoulder straps, the only indication of his rank. He wore that hat down low. There's many, many accounts of him um, out on campaign with soldiers, and they don't even recognize him. They don't even know who he is because he's so underdressed. This is in stark contrast to one of the famous generals in 19th century history, Winfield Scott, who was the general in chief of the Union Army in 1861. He loved the brass. He loved the trim. He loved all the ornamentation. He dressed to the maximum regulation of the law. And Grant was the opposite. And this gentleman here, I think, clearly follows in the idea that Grant set out the understated, underdressed private soldier who was a hardworking guy in the ranks. So that's the first thing that caught my attention uh, as I began to consider it. Now I wanna get back to the hat, which was the initial piece of eye candy that drew me in. I love this hat. It's low, it's a flat topped crown. It's barely tall enough to show off the insignia which is the cross sabers, which tells us that he was in a cavalry regiment. You've got his regimental number, 17. You have his company letter, F, and you have the cord and the acorns, which the acorns and the brass coming off of that is so big, it's hanging over the brim of the hat. So clearly 
this individual had a particular fondness for sort of a non-regulation look, a non-standard look, but he attached all of his hat brass to it. And the bottom line, it's just a cool look. It's an unusual hat to see. The next thing that caught my attention was the fact that he's not an enlisted man. He's a non-commissioned officer. There's, at first glance, I did not see this, but if you look closely, you'll see on this detail, his two chevrons, his two stripes that make up the chevron on his, uh, on his arm. And uh, that tells us, of course, that he's a corporal. So he was a corporal. Did he earn that through some act of courage? Was it a rank that he came into the company with? Was there something about him that compelled other people to follow? Did he have some kind of natural born leadership instinct? Don't know because we don't know who he is, but he was a corporal. So that caught my attention. Uh, there's two more things that caught my attention. And this one here was a bit of an oh, oh wow moment for me. And I hope you can see it in this enlargement. Look at his bow tie. Now look at the pin in the middle of his bow tie. It's a photo pin. And from where I'm looking, it appears to be the face of a woman. So who was she? Was she the sweetheart? Was she the fiance? Was she the wife? Someone that he cared enough to wear in the middle of his bow tie beneath his uniform when he had it all buttoned up? Again, we don't know, but the individual in that photo pin, that little tiny likeness probably holds the key to one of the motivations of why he went to war and a memory of who he left behind when he, out, when he went out on campaign. The last item is inspired by the printer, or pardon me, the photographer's imprint, the printed back mark. And this is on the reverse of the photograph. And I should mention this photograph, the format is a carte de visite, which is French for visiting card. It was an insanely popular format during the 1860s. It came to the US on the eve of the Civil War. And by the end of the war was the most popular of the photographic formats, beating out the Ambrotype, type, beating out the tin type. It was the dominant form. And one of the nice things about cartes de visite was that the photographer had a convenient place because the image was on paper, a convenient place to put his or her name and the gallery's location. And so here we are, J.D. Vickery is the photographer, uh, or as he called himself, a photographic artist in Bath, New York. Now, Bath, New York, combined with the regimental number 17 and the company letter F suggests, oh, and also the cross sabers of the cavalry suggests that this gentleman served in company F of the 17th New York Cavalry. So I looked up this regiment because it wasn't known to me. And I found out that the regiment never mustered for service. In fact, it was authorized in June of 1863 and it was recruited. Some number of men were recruited, but not enough to fill the regiment. And then in September of 1863, just a few months after the authorization was given, it was taken away and all of the recruits were diverted to a newly formed regiment, the 1st Veteran Cavalry. This regiment participated in numerous operations in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley before it mustered out of service in July of 1865. So it's my thinking that the combination of this photographer's back mark and the 17 and the F means that this soldier, this trooper, went from being an original recruit for Company F of the 17th New York Infantry, and then he was transferred to the 1st Veteran Cavalry. So there you have it. Some five, or I should say some five ideas, five thoughts of why this particular image 
is intriguing and compelling to me. That's my story. I know that we could go image by image and you could share images from your collection or if you're not a collector, images that you've seen in books or in videos or elsewhere. And we could talk about why they're so exciting. And you may be wondering, why am I sharing this specific photo? Partly because it's brand new to my collection, but also because I think it's representative of that excitement that we all share when we're on a voyage of discovery for a new image, not only in our collection, but something that we see and we like. So it's my hope that someday we'll be able to identify this individual. And I hope it's soon. So take care. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on the trail.